Welcome to Lecture 15, Privacy in the Home. The special status of the home in terms of privacy has long been recognized. Everyone is familiar with the maxim, a man's home is his castle, which is a phrase that appeared in English case law as early as 1499. The U.S. Supreme Court has repeatedly recognized the special status of one's home, noting that the home is entitled to special protection, quote, as the center of the private lives of people, end of quote, and that the right of a man to retreat into his own home and be free from unreasonable governmental intrusion is, quote, at the core of Fourth Amendment protections, end of quote. Indeed, much of the jurisprudence relating to the privacy of the home has been developed in the context of the Fourth Amendment, which, as we know, prohibits unreasonable searches and seizures. For example, in 1969, the Supreme Court noted in Chimel v. California that police who validly arrest someone in their home pursuant to an arrest warrant nonetheless may not conduct a general search of the home without a search warrant. In 1980, in Payton v. New York, the court struck down a New Jersey statute that provided for warrantless entry into a home to make an arrest, noting that nowhere is the zone of privacy more clearly defined, quote, when bounded by the unambiguous physical dimensions of an individual's home. End of quote. Absent exigent circumstances, which we will define later, the threshold of a home may not be crossed without a warrant. In fact, even an inch beyond the threshold is too much. In 1990, in Minnesota v. Olson, the court recognized that overnight guests in a home have a reasonable expectation of privacy and thus a warrant is necessary before a search may be conducted of a home. In 1999, in Wilson v. Lane, the special privacy protection afforded the home was recognized in the context of a media tag-along. The police, accompanied by a Washington Post photographer, validly entered a home to execute an arrest warrant on Wilson's son. The son was not home, and the police and Wilson ended up in a scuffle which was recorded by the photographer. The court concluded that the media presence, which was not required to execute the warrant, violated Wilson's Fourth Amendment rights. In 2001, the court addressed the use of sensory enhancement technology in the context of a home search in Kylo, the United States. In Kylo, federal agents suspected that Kylo was growing marijuana in his home. Using a thermal imaging device from a public street adjacent to Kylo's home, the officers detected that certain portions of the home were relatively hot compared to the rest of the home. The officers suspected Kylo was using heat lamps to grow marijuana. Based on this suspicion, police obtained a search warrant to search the home and discovered an indoor marijuana growing operation. Kylo sought to suppress the evidence seized, claiming it violated his Fourth Amendment rights. The Supreme Court concluded that where the government uses a device that is not in general public use to explore details of a home that would be unknowable without physical intrusion, the surveillance is a search and is presumptively unreasonable without a warrant. And in 2006, in Georgia v. Randolph, the court held that police have no right to search a home without a warrant where one resident consents and the other objects. The sanctity of the home is so strong that some activity which may be prohibited outside the home cannot be deemed illegal by the state if conducted within the confines of the home. For example, in Stanley v. Georgia, police searched Stanley's home pursuant to a valid search warrant searching for evidence of illegal gambling. Although no such evidence was found, the officers did discover several obscene films which violated Georgia law. Even though obscene materials generally enjoy no First Amendment protection, the court noted that the state, quote, 
has no business telling a man sitting alone in his house what books he may read or films he may watch, end of quote. The court struck down the Georgia law, basing its rationale, at least in part, on the sanctity of the home. The protections afforded the home may also extend to a home's curtilage, which is the area immediately surrounding a home, such as a garage, a storage shed, or greenhouse, provided the owner has a reasonable expectation of privacy in the curtilage. The concept of the home as a place of peace and refuge from the outside world has also been embraced by the court in the context of upholding regulations which limit First Amendment rights. In Kovacs v. Cooper, the court upheld a city ordinance prohibiting the use of sound trucks on public streets in neighborhoods, noting that the government has a legitimate interest in preventing noises which disturb the quiet and tranquility of a home. Of course, there are various exceptions to the requirement of a search warrant. With respect to homes, these generally fall into three categories. One, where consent to the search is given. Two, where the evidence seized is in plain view. And three, where exigent circumstances exist. Exigent circumstances usually arise in circumstances where the police reasonably believe that if they take the time to get a warrant, the public safety will be jeopardized, a suspect will escape, or evidence will be destroyed. In sum, despite the Supreme Court's oft-quoted statement in Katz v. United States that the Fourth Amendment protects people, not places, the concept that a man's home is his castle, where the interests of privacy are the strongest, has been recognized time and time again over many decades. In our next video, we continue our discussion of privacy and place, this time focusing on privacy in schools.